Let's talk about what you do if the IRS prepares a tax return for you and you disagree with the amount. My name is Darren Mish. I'm a tax attorney with a practice based in Tampa, Florida. I represent clients in all 50 states. So if you have an IRS problem, please give us a call at 888-438-6474 or visit our website at getirshelpnow.com. So many, many clients tell me that the IRS has prepared a tax return for them and they disagree with the amount. Sometimes they'll say things like, well, I only made $40,000 that year and the IRS says I owe $40,000. So we know the tax rate, although high in the United States, isn't 100%. So what's happened? Well, what's happened is the IRS has prepared what's called a substitute for return. So if a taxpayer doesn't file a return, usually within a few years, the IRS will go ahead and prepare one for them using the information that they have at hand. So typically, a, a typical scenario would be a self-employed person has a 1099 or maybe a couple 1099s, and they just take that gross figure off the 1099s, they add it up, uh, they, they basically add it all up, there's no deductions, there's no expenses, and the IRS just calculates the tax rate. So is that unfair? Absolutely. It's absolutely unfair. But the IRS is going to do that, and it's typically, in my opinion, to get the taxpayer's attention. Now, I'd say a very large number of taxpayers never never do anything about it. And I don't know if that's because they don't know what to do, because they, they don't find out about it, or they don't get good advice. I'm not really sure. But I can tell you what you need to do is you need to have an original return prepared subsequent to that substitute for return. You need to have that original return prepared. And what a lot of people will tell you to do is just go ahead and send it into the regular old service center and it eventually will all even out. Well, I tend to disagree with that. Uh, I think that what's happened, and I know this is true actually, that when there was a substitute for return prepared for you, there was actually an audit. And because there was an audit, and, and let me explain why I say there was an audit. There was an audit, it's, it's really a, a correspondence audit because they typically don't call you down to the IRS office to do this, but they took your they took your tax information, your payor information, and they calculated a tax return. It's an audit because then they have to send you what's called a notice of deficiency, which is a, an IRS letter 3219, and they have to wait the 91 days before they can actually assess that tax against you. Now, in the vast majority of cases, that's what happens. Taxpayers don't really know what to do, and so they find themselves with a big SFR, substitute for return balance. So what you do do is you prepare, you have a, a subsequent return, original return prepared, and you submit it under something called audit reconsideration. And audit reconsideration is covered in publication 3598. And let's take a look at that real quick. It's really, really simple. So here we have publication 3598, and it basically just goes through and, and tells you what to do. There's even a frequently asked questions, uh, section on the 3598 and I did I did take a look at those before I started this video and one of the things that I thought was really quite funny was number four here how long will it take before I receive an answer to my request and it says the IRS strives to timely handle all requests received you should expect to hear from us regarding your reconsideration request within 30 days after submission that's a complete joke listen ladies and gentlemen this is going to take somewhere between nine months and a year for these balances to adjust. It's probably worth it. Now, there are some drawbacks. I mean, you never want to have a substitute for return uh, filed against you if you can help it because it's never dischargeable in bankruptcy and because we know that there's a huge amount of excess tax penalty and interest assessed. But if you're in the type of situation where you think that you might actually have to pay this, in other words, you're not going to do an offer and compromise, then you're going to want it go ahead and follow the directions contained in 3598, the audit reconsideration uh, process publication, and you're gonna wanna send it to one of these addresses over here on the right side of this publication. Basically, you're gonna send it to the service center where you should have filed your tax return, but I want you to use these special addresses and uh, that have these special PO box numbers and these special stop numbers. I believe, in my experience, it, it, uh, it dictates that uh, this speeds the process up considerably. So that's what you need to do if you have a substitute for return prepared for you. If the IRS prepared a tax return for you that you disagree with, you're going to follow 3598 in the audit reconsideration process. My name is Darren Mesh. If you have any questions, problems, or concerns about IRS problems, I invite you to visit our website at getirshelpnow.com.